Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. There are a number of uh, different EGFR inhibitors that we have um, for our patients who have uh, EGFR mutant lung cancer. Now as first-line therapies for our patients with metastatic EGFR mutant lung cancer, we have three different EGFR inhibitors um, that we can use in this country, uh, gefitinib, erlotinib, and afatinib. Um, there's great data for all three of these, um, which is why they are approved agents. Um, in terms of how we use them, it really depends on the provider, um, depending on what you're used to using um, and what uh, you've potentially read about in terms of potential advantages like uh, side effects. I would say it's very common in, the, in this country to use erlotinib. That's been the approved agent for many years now. So many, many oncologists are familiar with erlotinib. We primarily use erlotinib for patients who have newly diagnosed metastatic EGFR mutant lung cancer. However, more recently, both gefitinib and afatinib are now approved agents as well. Gefitinib tends to have a better uh, toxicity profile and seems to have comparable efficacy. So now that it's an approved agent in this country, it's possible that we will see more of a shift toward gefitinib use. And so in my own clinic, um, if I have a patient who is a little more tenuous in terms of their performance status or has a lot of medical issues, one who I may worry about in terms of tolerating side effects of erlotinib, I'm very comfortable using gefitinib in place of erlotinib. We also have a fatinib that we can use, and I would say the main use that we're seeing for a fatinib is in patients who have a specific EGFR activating mutation. That's the exon 19 deletion. And uh, there is data from the Lux lung trials um, that show that there may be an overall survival benefit of a fatinib, particularly in the exon 19 deletions. And so I would say, in, again, in this country, we're seeing more and more use of afatinib, particularly for that specific type of EGFR mutations. And again, in my own clinic, I will use afatinib for patients who have EGFR exon 19 deletions, but generally those patients who are perhaps younger and very fit and who can tolerate some of the side effects um, that we see with afatinib, which tend to be a little bit more than with the other EGFR inhibitors. EGFR inhibitors overall are quite well tolerated, uh, but they do have some characteristic uh, side effects. Overall, EGFR inhibitors, the current uh, batch of first and second generation inhibitors like gefitinib, erlotinib, and afatinib all have rash and diarrhea as side effects due to inhibition of wild type EGFR. I would say we see probably the most side effects with afatinib compared to erlotinib and gefitinib. Gefitinib among the three tends to be uh, better tolerated uh, in terms of those side effects. Um, so that is one that we may uh, choose to use in a patient who is uh, more frail than, than someone else. Um, we'll choose gefitinib because of its better safety and side effect profile. We see uh, rash and diarrhea pretty consistently with erlotinib, probably in the range of 70 to 80 percent of patients will have rash and, and will have diarrhea. Usually those can be very easily managed uh, with uh, various medications, for example, topical um, antibiotics for the, for the rash, sometimes oral antibiotics for the rash, um, and anti-diarrheals for the diarrhea that may be caused by the EGFR inhibitors. Sometimes, though, we have to just hold the drug and dose reduce. So oftentimes when we start erlotinib, for example, at 150 milligrams a day, which is the standard dose, because of difficult to control rash or diarrhea, we may need to hold and dose reduce to 100 or even 75 milligrams a day. Afatinib, which is a second generation inhibitor, um, also an, an approved agent for us um, in this country, is a little more difficult in my experience uh, than, than uh, erlotinib or gefitinib. Again, there's rash and diarrhea. And with afatinib, I also see a little bit more mucositis um, than I see with the other agents. And that can be difficult for patients um, in terms of, of their eating and, and drinking. So I find afatinib can be challenging. Uh, many of the patients on afatinib will require a hold and a dose reduction in order to make the drug more tolerable. The studies that have uh, pursued rebiopsy of patients with EGFR mutations once they have progressed on first or second generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors have really been invaluable. Um, what I'm talking about are patients who are initially diagnosed with an EGFR mutation, are treated with a first generation, either erlotinib or gefitinib, 
or a second generation agent of fatinib, um, and on average may go nine to 12 months before they start progressing. Obviously, if their cancer is getting worse, they're breaking through the inhibitory effect of those first or second generation agents. When you rebiopsy those patients, you understand that in 50 to 60% of those patients, a secondary mutation occurs in exon 20, referred to as T790M. This changes the binding site for in inhibition for the TKIs um, and allows uh, them to break through the inhibitory effect of those agents. We now are in an era of being able to target that with third generation uh, TKI. Osimertinib was recently approved uh, for the use in T790M uh, specific patients. Now, um, that's an important advance because uh, prior to that approval, uh, we would divert to standard chemotherapy for these patients, but the use of the third generation TKI gives them another oral targeted option that uh, was not previously available. Now, in the other 40 to 50 percent, there's actually been a variety of resistance mechanisms, MET amplification, PI3 kinase uh, abnormalities, uh, HER2 abnormalities, BRAF abnormalities, uh, and also this entity of histologic transformation. It's interesting that in the EGFR mutation patients, these are almost always adenocarcinoma in predominantly light or, or never smokers. Um, the observation has been on these rebiopsy studies uh, to see histologic transformation to small cell lung cancer. We've had a few cases at our center where there's more of a sarcomatoid carcinoma appearance of the biopsy. Um, and this is important. Certainly if you diagnose on a rebiopsy a small cell transformation, that would demand um, a, a really a change in the direction of your therapy. You would use a standard regimen for uh, small cell lung cancer such as a platinum etoposide. Uh, and these patients respond to that. But, but that mechanism or how that occurs, how that histologic transformation occurs, um, is, is, at least by me, is not well understood, but certainly has been documented in the literature. And, and we see this in our practice with EGFR mutant uh, positive uh, patients. Um, the approval of osimertinib and having a T790M strategy is vitally important. This is 50 to 60% of the patients. For the remaining 40%, uh, there's a variety of mechanisms that we still have a little bit of work to do to know the, the optimal way forward in that uh, proportion of the refractory uh, mutant patients.